Hello, I'm Marites Vito. Welcome to Rappler Talk. Joining us is Miles Garcia, writer and author who is based in the U.S. He's a contributor to Positively Filipino, an online magazine in the West Coast. I will be talking to Miles about his 2016 book, 30 Years Later, Catching Up with the Marcos Era Crimes. Miles left the Philippines just before the declaration of martial law in 1972, and he has lived in the U.S. since then. He's, he will be talking to us from the San Francisco Bay Area in California. And to our viewers, we welcome questions. You can send them via the Facebook comment section. Thank you so much, Miles, for making time for this interview. Uh, okay. So thank you too, Marites. I mean, it's not every day everyone gets asked by a Nobel Peace Prize winning organization to <laughs> share one's views. Um, I just wanted to say, Siguro, before your uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, accolade, uh, there, there might not have been an opening on my calendar, but... Uh, <laughs> But but with that with that Scandinavian honor, sure. Thank you so much. So good after. Uh, I guess good evening, some uh, viewers uh, in the U.S. and magandang hapon sa uh, to you in the Philippines. Yes. Yeah, so Miles, uh, yes, what a discovery when you wrote this book. You wrote it in 2016. So a little bit of background. Why did you write this? What led you to? into this project in 2016, into this rabbit hole. <laughs> Good choice of words. Uh, so so we, we flash back to 2016, the, the, the Philippine election pres was coming up. Friends here in, in, in California challenged me. Sabi nila, oh, sige naman, maybe you can write something. Uh, Time, time was really short and, you know, like anything, it, it takes time to put together something worthwhile. Um, I've been, an, even from my days in Manila, I've been an in, inveterate list maker. Basta I make lists and this was pre-internet days. And even when I left the Philippines to come here, nagdala ko ng madaming clippings from the days just before... You know, they I left the Philippines uh, barely a month before martial law, not not knowing that that would happen. But uh, even then, I, I happened to bring clippings with me, uh, which I thought, mm, I think this could, you know, this will come in into use years from now. So I, I had all that raw material. And then when I got challenged, uh, uh, let, let me whip something up. And you know, see 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 what comes out. I didn't make any promises, and but and with the um, the benefits of uh, POD, which is published on demand in Amazon, yeah. Then it it and I had the previous I had done a previous book, which was the Secrets of the Olympic Ceremonies, which is a labor of love for me. That's my other passion. Um, so yeah, it became a reality and. Yeah, all those clippings. As a matter of fact, there was one cache of clippings that I forgot about. Now I had in in my storage, you know. But anyway, all that with all my lists and okay, I said I have some, you know, enough material here. Plus the ease of of research on online, uh, just made it made it easier. And be, being my second book, it 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 just comes easier each each time around. Yeah, I think Miles, the context was uh, the son of the late dictator was going to run for vice president in 2016, and nagring bayon ng alarm bell sa yo. Kasi here in the book, I think I think that was the uh, purpose to remind the impetus. The yeah, that was partially it. Yes, uh, exactly. So you know, whatever um, brick bats, I I I I, I could throw uh th that was my contribution now you on 2022 ferdinand bongbong marcos jr is running for president and as you know he's the front runner uh, in the polls in the right. early polls and then you but you, you post may maganda kang question sa book mo eh sabi mo have the filipinos made peace with their past kasi bakit napaka popular uli 
ng mga Marcoses, naka-rehabilitate na ba sila? You know, looking from a distance dahil nasa US ka, matagal kang hindi dumalaw dito, baka mas may perspective. Ano nangyari? Naka-rehabilitate na talaga ang Marcoses? Well, uh, from what I hear, from what I've read, his his support is uh, is is very avid with with the newer you know with are they what millennials or something? So walasi lang they they did not experience what really happened during his father's uh, term, you know. Uh, so it it was a tabula rasa for for these kids. So uh, that is really hard to combat, um, and you know, it, as as you said, it's it's round number two, uh, and again, there's the similarity with the thing, you know, with what's happening in the Philippines' ex mother country. I mean, the U.S. You know, the the orange ogre is is yearning to come back in 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 what in two years' time. But of course, he has a, pa- a whole pile of lawsuits uh, against him, which would disqualify him. Um, so, I, you know, we just have to put up with all these gremlins and you know, mga ogres of the past. You know, I, I don't know. That, that seems yeah. to be a reality. Miles, uh, is it some people are, uh, you know, hard on ourselves. Some Filipinos are hard on themselves and ourselves. Sabi nila, kasalanan daw din natin, meron mga na- hindi nagawa. May, uh, have we forgiven the Marcoses? Are we that uh, forgiving as a, as a people? Um, well, from what I know of the Filipino character, oo nga, madali mag-forgive tayo. But, uh, you know, as I, I used in the frontispiece of the book, uh, well, in, in, in the English-speaking countries, there's a saying, fooled me once, shame on you, fooled me twice, shame on me. I think wala tayong equivalent of that in, 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 you know, in, in Filipino jargon and thinking. So I did have to make the, 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 the Filipino translation. You know, linokomoko means an... Uh, gago ka, and then <laughs> linoko mo uli ako, ulul ako I, some, or something, yeah, that that's sort of uh, what, what I wrote. And again, history is, and we'll probably come back to this at the end of the, the, the this interview, I mean, history is the best teacher, you know. Um, the Philippines likes to brag about its how rich it is with history, 500 years. Yeah, which is really something to be great about, you know, to be proud about, even though, of course, it's as a subjugated country. But as as the philosophers have said, if you don't learn from the lessons of history, then you are just doomed to repeat them. Uh, yeah, know. let's, let's go. Alam mo, Miles, when I read your book, it's it was an easy read. What... What struck me was ang daming detalye, like na, na jogging memory ko. Pakikwento uh, mo naman, or at least, were you shocked nung trinockdown mo lahat ng travels ni first, at the time First Lady Imelda Marcos? Nakasinilista mo lahat saan pumunta, bumili siya ng paintings, pati fake paintings, jewelry, real estate. What shocked you most when you were writing about Imelda? Well, you know, that that's why I kept that, that chronology. Dahil uh, I had that as a list even from uh, from back then, from from when they first, you know, uh, ran, uh, uh, elevate were elevated to to national uh, power. Uh, it was really amazing. I mean, that that the, this woman from a a poor developing country, you know, uh, traipsed the world like, and that was before frequent flyer miles, but she was the queen of frequent flyer miles on the backs of of the poor people of the Philippines. I mean, lahat tayo, my, you know, my parents paid their taxes. Uh, every law-abiding person uh, paid their taxes. But uh, this, 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 you know, the, the, the wife of the dictator just uh, uh, lived like, well, it wasn't her money. So it was easy for her to just throw it away, you know. You, those fake paintings... Na right. ag- again nilalabas uli yan ngayon eh. So, did that surprise you 
or yung mga super extravagance extravagant right. purchases ni Imelda. Ano yung pinaka maybe jarring sa or surprising sa yo? Well, yeah, uh, the most egregious examples and which well, sort of my my jaw dropped a little was from Manapat's book Some Are Smarter Than Others which um was extremely even more detailed than than my book um when you know when 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 the regime fell in february 86 tapos of course uh you know a lot of the the what as they say baho and all that you know was nahalungkat and was brought out i was shocked to hear that what she had like 18 fur coats in in storage in the now demolished um mandarin hotel in makati i mean the first lady of a tropical country has more than a dozen of the, and I'm sure they're not, you know, they're not cheap fur coats that the 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 working class Filipino immigrant to the states buys from Alexander's or or Kmart. You know, those are bought from Bulgari and 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 uh, all the luxury Bergdorf Goodman. I mean, you know, she she wouldn't be caught dead in Kmart or what? Although, of course. Things went down when when they were in Hawaii, but that's another story. Uh, yeah, I was just astounded. And then uh, I'm sure not even uh, Catherine the Great or 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 what's her face, the other one she's compared to Marie Antoinette had 18 fur coats in cold storage. I mean, that really you know almost dropped my jaw. And then speaking of the paintings, well, there was that 3.5 mil supposed drawing of. Michelangelo, which, and you know, and, and all these art dealers knew she was an easy mark. I mean, at saka lalo na yung mga Italian uh, uh, art dealers or fencers, oh, you know, they, they could, they could, uh, they could sense the, what an easy mark she was a mile away. Dahil when she, bu- when she bought that, um, it was offered to her by that Bellini guy in Europe. And then she had sort of buyer's remorse supposedly a few days after in New York, uh, the hills, there wasn't enough authentication, so she tried to back out of the deal. But then her her lawyers in New York said, "No, we, we you can't, ma'am, because um, the, the 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 deal was consummated outside the U.S. So you have no, you know, there's no there's no recourse." And then, of course, after that, it she just hung on to it, and it it's uh, I think it's been displayed in her Pacific penthouse, and she always passes it off as. Oh, yun ang painting ni Michelangelo. You know, maski it, it, there's really no authentication. And then, and then is that I think that's the one she also had three copies made para nung when when her offices at the Congress were raided, uh, so that the, the the customs or whatever agents were they were they were confused. And of course, the, the Philippines can't afford the man yung uh, authentication processes that uh, say for, fake or fortune. Uh, employees, you know, where you have to go through the most expensive court walled institute, say in London or 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 the Smith or the Metropolitan in New York. So, I mean, the the, the sleight of hand uh, and the panloloko is just so 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 thorough and complete. Tapos nung another another incident when when she was shut out of buying the three-story penthouse of that Samuel guy in Park Avenue, even though that that Glessy Tantoko, her, her, her number one psychophant, fronted for her. Uh, but then when the contents of that penthouse went up for auction at Sotheby's, uh, well, Sotheby's or Christie's, um, that was just a few hours before the auction was supposed to, to, to take place, they canceled it because... Who, you know who bought the entire contents of the auction, uh, lock, stock, and barrel. But you know, Madame I- IRM, I mean, queen of the richest country in the world of the Philippines. Tapos, they, she also bought the all the 500 remaining catalogs of that auction. You know, th- those catalogs cost about ten dollars each when you when. When you when you send for them, the glossy, it's all on glossy, uh, high quality paper. But that was, of course, to obliterate any 
any track, you know, any records of what she acquired lock, stock, and barrel. So, I mean... Uh, yeah, so Miles, and dami mo nang nas- nasulat doon. Let's go to your chapter on the Marcos cases. You, ano eh, you listed or you tracked down then yung development sa Hawaii. And right. it was, in, in one of your stories for Positively Filipino, it was there where you mentioned about contempt, the contempt judgment versus Imelda and uh, the son Bong Bong. And ngayon, ang computation is that $353 million na yung contempt judgment against Imelda and Bong Bong, which they continue to evade. And then I, in your article, you gave us an, you asked a question, will Bong Bong, if he wins at the time for vice president, will he be able to enter the U.S.? And, and maybe you can talk about that a bit. It's sure, yeah. Well, the, the, the judgments are outstanding, and that's why... Since you know, since those were passed by the superior by the federal court in Hawaii, they, they've never set foot back on U.S. soil except for I believe um, I I the younger one, Amy, yeah, Irene. I, Irene, 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 who is not named. She's the only one who what you know what Marcus Waters say what has come into the U.S. because she's not named. But otherwise, the the older sister. Bong Bong and the mother, they have not set, because once they set foot here, um, it, it will start the process of the arrest. Uh, there is no outstanding, there is no outstanding warrant ngayon, pero I checked into this, that if they return, um, so the, the, the Justice Department is alerted that, hey, these people are here, so that will set in motion the process to have uh, arrest warrants created and then they can go after them. But of course, they're not so stupid as to, you know, show, show their face. It's not like, and it's not like they'll, they'll, they'll go under this guise so he can, he can, you know, gamble in, in Vegas under a, a wig and, you know, uh, and disguise. Um, Pero what if he wins as president this time? Well, I, I, you, you wrote about a scenario similar to a president, but this president uh, was facing charges or before the International Criminal Court, and the right, U.S. Allowed, right. allowed him, right? I, no, I, I don't think an exception. I, I don't think an exception was made. Okay. Uh, again, it probably depends on who will be sitting in Washington after 2024. I don't know if it's a friendly, but. The th- I've thought about this. The Department of Justice here in the States is, is so big anyway. And even, what's his face? The Orange Ogre, you know, the la- in it, the last days of his administration, he tried to twist it uh, even with his chosen man, Barr, and Barr did not bend. So uh, I doubt if even a friendly administration, a future administration friendly to a, a BBM administration can... can um, counter the, the, the standing uh, judgments of the Hawaii court, which, by the way, are good. And I think you, you did publish the extension until 2031. So if we so if he goes into power 2022 for, and the six year stays, so 2028. So, so it's still in effect. Now, where whoever U.S. president after 2024 will be, where he can meet, he or she can meet uh, the Philippine president if it's, you know, Bong Bong, Bong Bongita. Um, it will probably have to be at a neutral, you know, like they have the APEC uh, summits every year at, at, at other countries around the Pacific Basin. Siguro doon na lang sila mag meet on, on neutral, you know, third um and it, in a way, I've also thought more about it. It's good that if he can't come, because he will probably encounter. That's why. What's his face? The current, you know, the current fool sitting there in Malacanang hasn't also set foot in uh, uh, on U.S. soil. Uh, they, they they will meet with you know tremendous uh, opposition and 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 protests here. That it, it's not worth their time. So mabuti na lang na yeah. Let let let. Let them fear the, the, the outstanding uh, warrants and contempt judgments that, you know, hang over them like a 
sort of Damocles. Let's go to your discussion naman in the book on the Taliano gold. Alam okay. mo, alam mo, <laughs> That's a fun, <laughs> fun chapter. <laughs> yes. Uh, you wrote about it in 2016. Ngayon, it's again a, a big issue. Can you make sense of it? Kasi hoax, iba, you wrote about it as a hoax. So, it, it, it is. I mean, really, it, it's just bizarre. It, I mean, it's it. You know, I I I think I said it was. It, it gets the the crackpot uh, price of the internet. I mean, I, it could only have been possible really with the internet. Dahil you know hakatago sila behind once it's published, and it it. I mean, you, you really have to be nuts or a QAnon or QAnon supporter or whatever the equivalent is. In the Philippines, you know, to believe such outlandish claims, na whoever this this so-called family is traces the roots pa from way past Queen Queen Victoria, I think. Yeah, yeah, from that time, and and all the descendants, uh, uh, like uh, what's his face, Hitler and and Toho, all, all of them have the blood of Rizal and this Talano. I mean, not even the most creative Hollywood screenwriter can come up with, you know, with the, such a crackpot scheme. And then, of course, you know, yung mga, all the blind followers anyway will just buy into that. And, ah, oo nga, dyan ang galing yung gold ni, ni Ferdinand, you know. Yeah, right. So, napansin mo ba, Miles, in 2016 that this Taliano story Mm. Search again, or because of Bong Bong's vice presidential campaign, did you see that when you were writing the you book? Know, uh, uh, it, it, I think it was just so far out. No, it, it really didn't have an if an effect uh, other than, uh, I don't know what a, a, a few a few dozen, a handful of of people who, who would believe it. I mean, it's it's just completely outlandish and. Uh, you know, you, you you'd have to be brain dead to 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 even <laughs> be, be, believe that the, the thing. So, Miles, and, if yeah, uh, because here it's been a big issue, and there's been a lot of many of our well people here believe it, the followers. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, nga sinabi mo, it's a hoax. But if you were to write your book today, right. Kasi mahal, 30 years later, and ngayon 36 years later, may babaguhin ka ba? Or I would, well, I, I would just do updates, obviously. Not not much has changed, you know, within the last six years. I mean, he he lost, he meaning, you know, BBM, he lost. So he's he's not uh he's not active so so to speak, uh in the last six years. Um any significant because uh what's interesting also is that since you have a distance now from the philippines right is there uh, any may sabi mo walang significant changes in the past 6 years no because he lost bong bong mm -hmm. lost in 2016 but he may you know there's a chance if elections were held today baka manalo siya for president right, so right. In the yeah space of 6 years parang na rehabilitate na sila despite all the what your book says the Marcos era crimes right um you know i have i have a question for you um how accurate really are the polls no jaan um well here in the states i mean you know 26 in the presidential election 2016 i mean it was all but in the bag for Hillary, and then you know when it came out, uh, you know who, who, who won, and it would have been uh, thirty nine thousand. If only thirty nine thousand votes in three states had gone the other way, then you know the the, the orange narcissist would not have sat at, at in the in the White House. Um, and then of course you go back to the U.S. election of nineteen forty eight. Uh, who was Dewey was supposed to to win, but no. I mean, you know, the the farmer from Kansas uh, was Kansas or Missouri. Truman Truman did did beat him, you know. So there's there's always a chance for an upset. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why I I question how how accurate are the are the polls right now. 
Yeah. He, well, at least here, uh, we sort of look at two leading Paul outfits. Right. But you, yeah, but you have a point because uh, we never know even, uh, you know, there may be an upset. But generally, social weather stations and Pulse Asia are the leading, Paul, are the most credible. And what, what is what is their track record? Were they right in 20? Yes. They were yes, right. So okay. Far, yes. okay. Okay. But I haven't checked with other like senatorial races, but for the presidential candidates, uh -oh, yeah, uh -oh. mal uh, malalapit yung mga polls nila. Correct, correct. So, yeah. Oh, hindi pa kami nasunog dito. <laughs> we haven't been burned by these polling outfits for these two leading polling outfits. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And um, well, you know, even if the numbers are 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 not favorable. Uh, th there's always a chance. I mean, um, and diba? I mean, you, 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 as they say, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Yes. And anyway, last question na lang ito, Miles. Uh -oh. so, kung manalo si Ferdinand Marcos Jr., right. lahat ng sinulat mo, para yung mga jewelry na hindi pa na isole siguro, yung mga paintings, ano to? <clears throat> uh, makaka... I mean, hindi na siya ipopursu siguro ng bagong pangulo kung manalo siya. Well, he would be the new, he would be the new pangulo, and certainly, uh, as expected, I mean, he will rewrite history and uh, he will pull all the levers to <clears throat> probably get back all his, you know, mother's confiscated uh, jewelry. Which I I did speak to a representative. Uh, with um, from well Sotheby's or Christie's, and at that time, uh, it, it was about they were roughly it was twenty to thirty U.S. Do million dollars was the worth of the aggregate cost of of her jewels. Which, if if the Philippine government had put up for auction, that would be the the starting point. Uh, but. I, I guess with 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 personnel favorable to to the Marcoses, you know, hold uh, sitting at the central bank or at the um, Bureau of Customs where the Remuliot is uh, loot is 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 being held. That is the most desirable. From my conversation with the with the Sotheby, shall we just say Sotheby's uh, representative? That that is the one they 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 want. Uh, if if it ever goes into an international auction. Oh, oh siyempre, they they will pull all levers to to get all of that back. You know, you, 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 I'd be surprised if they didn't. <laughs> okay, salamat. Thank you very much, Miles, for sharing your time with us. I'll just show again our viewers your book. It's a popular bookstore. Madaling basahin. And you know what it did to me is it jogged my memory. So I said I better talk to this author. So. Finally, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. And then also yeah. for, for Filipinos in, in Australia, Canada, the US, uh, you know, you're part of the Amazon circuit. So Madaling e order online. It's uh, I think it's, it's still $14. Okay, from, good. Yeah, from six years ago. So yeah, <laughs> Hindi, Hindi, it's not, you know, it's not a victim of inflation. So okay. you can buy it for yourselves or for and then send send copies home, you know. Yes. So we will continue to talk about um, the Marcoses, our history in future conversations. Salamat, Miles. And thank you to our viewers as well. Bye. Salamat also. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.